All right, now it's time to take a look at what you missed from Sunday's win over the Oakland Raiders. And Dennis Pitta is here again today to break it all down. And Dennis, when I watched Sunday's game, the Ravens looked like a completely different team than they had the previous two weeks. So quite simply, what changed? Well, that's life in the NFL. You're never as bad as your worst loss. You're never as good as your best win. And we see this team look completely different from week to week. And you have to ask yourself why? Well, number one, we understand there was no Derek Carr on the offensive side of the ball for the Raiders, but our defense did a nice job of dialing up creative blitzes, doing a nice job putting pressure on the quarterback and making them uncomfortable. And offensively, you look at what we were able to do. We were able to establish a run game and hit big plays, something that we couldn't do the previous two weeks. So you mentioned those exotic blitzes. Really, a lot of credit goes to Dean Pease on this one. So let's go ahead and take a look. So this is a double safety blitz here. And Dennis, what do you see that allows safety Tony Jefferson to come completely untouched to get to EJ Manuel? Well, you look at Oakland here, and they really have six guys to block our front. CJ Mosley's walked up in the A-gap. They have to account for him. The line's accounting for him, and so the running back's responsibility in this protection is to block any support player, safety player, or corner coming off the edge. Now he sees Eric Weddle roll down late, and he immediately knows he has to adjust to go pick him up. However, what they don't account for is Tony Jefferson coming off the slot and blitzing untouched off the backside. Now the quarterback's responsibility here is to throw hot because that man is unaccounted for and unable to be blocked but coming off his backside, EJ Manuel doesn't see him, holds onto the ball too long. In our case, you know, fortunately results in a sack. Now this was kind of a theme throughout the game. Dean was dialing up some of these creative blitz packages. This is a kind of another similar situation. It's, this time it's Anthony Levine that comes untouched. Yeah, and Anthony Levine is a player that you can put anywhere on the field. He's kind of a hybrid safety linebacker and someone that creates mismatch problems in the back end and also in the front here. And so you have him walked up and CJ Mosley as well. You see the offensive line pointing Looks like there's some communication problems. Anthony comes untouched and another great blitz dialed up by Dean Pease in this defense. All right, so let's keep it on the defensive side of the ball here, Dennis. And I want to take a look at defensive lineman Willie Henry. We made such a big deal about Brandon Williams not being out there the past couple of weeks. Well, step on up Willie Henry. and He probably played the best game of his young career. Yeah, and I was really impressed with Willie Henry throughout this game. And his biggest impact came in the run game, being able to fire off the ball, be explosive, hold the line of scrimmage and create problems in the backfield and you see him here gap down and of course what that means is he's lined up initially in the B gap between the guard and the tackle and at the snap of the ball he slants into the A gap now between the guard and the center. He gets an edge nicely, forces him upfield, creates a ton of penetration and gives Marshawn Lynch nowhere to go. He runs into the back of his line and there goes down to the ground for a loss. And then this one is another very similar play here. Double team on Michael Pierce in the middle, then Willie Henry takes care of his man, more penetration to get into the backfield. Yeah, and what you love to see here is he uses his hands tremendously. He's low, he's explosive out of the ball, he stalemates the offensive lineman there, uses his hands to create separation, sheds the block, and is right there to make a tackle. So obviously Willie Henry's development is a good sign for this defense, regardless of when Brandon Williams gets back on the field. But now let's go ahead and flip it over to the offensive side of the ball. You know, we've talked a lot the last couple of weeks and been a little critical of the offensive line play, waiting for them to give Joe Flacco that protection. Well, it happened this week and it happened from the very first play of the game. Well, we've been critical and rightly so. This offense hasn't produced much and they've lacked big plays and really the last two weeks struggled to find consistency again in the run game. But that was not the case this Sunday. And this is a great example on this play of them being able to push the ball downfield. And the one thing we talked about last week is this offensive line's inability to protect Joe Flacco in the pocket. They do a great job here. And the one person you have to account for on this defensive line of the Oakland Raiders is Khalil Mack. And what you see the Ravens do here is they vice Khalil Mack. They put the tackle and the tight end in a double team to really take him out of the play. And so it gives Joe time to deliver a terrific strike downfield for a big play to Mike Wallace and to get him going early. So obviously the big plays are a good sign for this offense. A lot of people are excited about that. And the Ravens hope they can continue that this week against the Bears. That does it for What You Missed This Week. As always, thank you very much, Dennis.